Hi folks, Scott here. I'm outside and here's my remnants of the cannibalization that occurred and now it is all in here. Okay, for those interested, I've got some very large coils of wire wound barbarically. I'll go through all the details and what I've learned about setting up a Tesla coil to a fairly accurate degree including the top load surface area and the parameters that outline the primary and said capacitant bank, which I have quite a variety here of high voltage capacitors. I've got my encyclopedia capacitors. I've got this one big bucket. I've got this whole tote with all these beer bottles, which some aren't even connected for tuning. Then I've got this array over here that I will show, hopefully, the use with this giant, giant coil over there with the wine bottle on top. No, I'm not the one drinking the wine. However, there are 24 wine bottles in those three buckets, totaling, and there's 40 beer bottles in there, totaling. And so on and so forth. So, let me get to the meat of it real quick. Here's uh, one car battery is running all of this. That car battery used to have my rotary pulserator thing out there, which still works. Goes through contacts. But I procured this on a job that was tearing it out. It's a reversing contactor that runs off 110. But what I've done is I've connected the normally closed auxiliary contact to the coil that pilots the whole three that I've got in parallel to accept the current to the, from the battery. And that just sets there and chatters back and forth, connecting, disconnecting itself like the buzzer concept. And I've got my little battery charger charging the battery, which doesn't last very long. And that pulses the, through this hair dryer resistor, which I've got almost shorted now as a direct, goes into the three hand-wound microwave oven transformers. They go into my spark gap, and that negative side is grounded all the way from the primary to the secondary to the negative of the microwave ovens to the batteries to all the capacitors. Then the hot side comes out through the spark gap and the hot side of the capacitors into the primary. A typical sol uh, static Tesla circuit. Alright, so let me just show you what I've got here. The primary with all those capacitors with this top load is balanced out at almost one turn. Not even one turn. I've had this thing all the way around five turns depending on the capacitance. I can maintain resonance of this piece of crap coil with splices. It's number 12 THHN, folks, and look at the secondary. It's falling apart, and it still works fine. That's to prove the concepts of radiant energy versus the electromagnetic 90-degree factor in this air core radiant-type magnifying transformer. Okay, let me fire it up real quick. You can see what I got with all of this top load affair. There's my gap. It's nothing to brag about, but it's four or five inches. And basically, it shatters like so. All the light bulbs are lighting up all around, way over there. And that thing sparks away. And that's with about seven eighths of a turn. And that's about a three-foot primary corral. And there's only seven-eighths of a turn that's connected. Doing just that, with all that garbage, into this assembly, two sap buckets, a high bay cover, diffuser, and the, the whole, my old clock in this going to be windmill thing is ground. Yeah, and it's cool to see the sparks arc off the spokes if I want. All right, that's enough for the minute. I am going to attempt to connect this big thing up. And then I will hope that that primary is large enough 
and the capacitor network back there, I can get this thing to ring a little bit. It oscillates at a low frequency, like 126 kilocycles. That one there is about 500. Over and out for the moment. I don't know if you can hear that. And I know this isn't legal. But those are the stickers off the bottles. And that's my vat of salt water off the wood stove that warms up the water enough to melt those big... Uh, Pellets that look like little lemon candies. Alright, I'm up in my wood shop studio slash semi-electronics arena. Lead Scallon wheel, Sweet 16, O-scope suspended from the atmosphere, lights. There it is, there's the big giant coil with the fairly large corral primary. Now before, as you recall I said three quarters to seven eighths. I have since then added enough capacitance to drive this ungoshly top load that is a sap bucket, a high bay diffuser, uh, pretty much antique aluminum ice flying saucer we used to call them and a lawn chair that just elevates it all. Now, real quick, again, here's all the capacitors. There are seven encyclopedia capacitors, the big hydraulic fluid capacitor, 40 beer bottles, and I have them all connected. And believe it or not, I kind of in my head calculated rough numbers as to what the nanofarads would be due to my good friend Roy St. Vincent, who has a capacitance meter that told me that one beer bottle is about 0.8 nanofarads. And I used the Java TC calculator to figure out where the taps on this should be due to the size <laughs> and everything. And you would not believe how accurate all of it was. So, here we go. Just for now, the battery's almost dead, but it charges. That gap's about six or seven inches away. So it's quite a machine, the old 55 gallon poly barrel all junk. The only thing I purchased, believe it or not, was the salt. <laughs> Alright, over and out. Hope you enjoyed my space age looking arrangement made all out of junk with a giant five turn primary three feet in diameter. It's all recycled. It goes to show what you can do with radiant energy. So Tesla was right. Now I'm going to find some of those gargantuan transistors that might just run this thing. So I can resonantly have a tickler and send power over to the maple tree across the lawn. Over and out.